Hello everybody and welcome to your Lego tutorial number two where you'll make your very first program so you're in for a treat so now we want to make a new project <sighs> so let's wait for this to load and then we want to go to win32 then win32 project and name it what you want to name it so I'm going to name it Allegro to Tut one for tutorial so let me just change the location because I really don't want it to be in that location so choose what you want to save it yada 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 basic stuff yeah okay now if you're using Visual C++ then you'll get this prompt just click next and make it an empty project so you don't get all those win32 things like trust me you don't want to see what's gonna pop up if you don't do empty project okay now we need to add a source file so add new item go to CPP and name it main and then you got a new source file called main.cpp so now we get into the coding part which is what all you guys wanted to do so now now that we have a leg girl we have to include it and remember those include files like you remember in the basics when you were learning this basic C++ and you have to do include IO stream well basically that includes a library and the library has functions built into it so IO stream stands for input output stream so basically it allows you to use C out and C in so when you include Allegro Allegro.h it allows you to use the functions of Allegro so go ahead and include Allegro.h now we're gonna make our int our main function and we're gonna put return 0 just like you know as in the basics and just so you know if you haven't went through the basics of C++ I strongly advise you do that before you do this because you will not understand anything unless you know the basics so do not watch this unless you know your basics so back to this a new thing you have to add is this end of main and do not put a semicolon at the end I do not really know the real reason why I just know that you're not supposed to put it there it will still work if you put it there but there's for some reason why you shouldn't so just remember that you have to put that after your main function so now we get into initializing Allegro so in order to use Allegro's components we've allowed the Allegro libraries we can use as components but we can't like actually use them until we initialize them just like you cannot use a variable x equals 10 unless you initialize the variable as like an int or a double or a float so in this case we just put allegro underscore init and opening and closing brackets so that allows you to use all the functions of allegro so now you're probably going to want the player to input something like the arrow keys or W, A, S, and D for movement. So you put install underscore keyboard. Just so you know we won't be using the keyboard in this tutorial. I'm just giving you some functions that you might want to use in the future. Also, you have install mouse. And this also installs down but we won't do that today so what you need to do is you need to set a color depth so if you don't know what a color depth is it's basically I'm I'm not really like 
a hundred percent sure, but like it's like the depth of color, like the amount of color you use. Like it's kind of hard for me to explain. I understand what it means, but it's kind of hard for me to explain. The main ones that you should know is just, it's sixteen or thirty-two, and make sure the power of two. So if you really don't really know what set color depth is, and you really want to know the like what it really means, I'll send you a link in the description so you can look into it further. So make sure you set the color depth before you do this function that I'm going to put below it. So set underscore gfx underscore mode. And then now this is where you set up the screen. So it has to go after set color depth. You can't put set color depth under it. So what we're going to do is put in capital letters set and I mean GFX sorry underscore auto detect underscore windowed and what this basically does is it just sets a window on our screen set to the size that we put right here. So we want it to be 640 by 480 and just put 0 and 0 here. I won't get into depth about what those mean right now. So we basically, well if you're asking do you got to memorize these, yes you have to memorize it. And after a while it becomes easy, it just becomes second nature, like you'll be able to do it with ease. So then now we have our screen. So now just put read key opening closing brackets and what that does it just waits for a user to enter something and then it goes throughout the rest of the program so in this case it waits for you to press a button and then when you do then it does return zero so then you would think you're done now right but this is the thing about a leg girl and you have to link it and this is what I mean you have to pay close attention and a note, you have to do this for every single project that you do. So not just this project, every single one. So you have to go to your pro project, right click, and go to properties. Or if you don't have that in your IDE, you go to project at the top and properties. And when this comes up, Oh, I just need to wait for it to load a bit. Okay, I, you go to configuration properties, and you go to linker. Then you click input. So at the top, you'll see additional dependencies, and you'll see an arrow. Well, if you click that, then you'll see an arrow, and you go to edit. Now you type in allege dot lib and you click OK and some I don't know for some of them sometimes it doesn't work sometimes you have to put a l l l d dot lib but for me it works when I put allege dot lib but if allege doesn't work then you put a l d dot lib and if none of those two works then leave a comment in the video and I'll tell you how to fix it okay and also put in your error code so I can find out what the problem is so anyways you put a ledge dot lib click OK and then you put apply and then OK so then now it's, it's attached to the linker and as you know when a program compiles it links it and then it compiles so it basically links it to your Allegro library so that it can actually use Allegro functions. So now let's run this. So Control F5 to run this, and let's see this compile. Okay, now let's see this, and voila, you zoom out here a bit. Oh, because I I zoomed out, it didn't. It read the key. So let's run that again. And voila, you got a screen, a blank screen. 
and that's basically how you make a screen in in Allegro so I hope you like this tutorial and I'm going to be teaching you how to do text and some other stuff in the next tutorial so hope you liked it and bye